Okay, so carrying on with the, uh, the wing construction of the model, um, <coughs> as I've alluded to before, there's, there's um, air intakes at the leading edges of the wings here. Um, I've just used some plastic card to, to back them off and uh, trimmed it to size when it's dry, and I've just painted it black. Um, it's good enough for what I want. Uh, you can see all these areas that are painted black on the intakes. The main undercarriage bays have been glued in place, they needed some reinforcement adding as well. So uh, I've done that to, uh, to all the wing halves, so um, we're more or less ready to join these wing halves. Um, but one of the things we need to add, because of the, uh, the fact that the Heinkel 209 uh, had a nose wheel and a lot of airframe behind the main wheels, it requires uh, quite a fair bit of weight to, uh, to make it stand on its undercarriage. Um, Unfortunately, because of the way the aircraft is designed, all of this area at the nose here uh, is full of uh, is full of wheel bay and um, and cockpit. So, getting enough weight well forward is quite difficult. So, we've got the um, the inside of the uh, engine nacelles here that we can we can use. I'm just going to trim that card away there. So, like I say, we've got the, as long as it's um, forward of the main undercarriage. Um, it's fine and we need it to be as far forward as possible. So we're going to be filling um, filling these up with lead. This here. Now what I did a few years ago was I bought a roll of roofing lead. Uh, went into a, um, uh, a sort of hardware shop and uh, bought this roll of uh, plumbing lead. Uh, sorry, roofing lead. Cost me about £16 I seem to remember at the time. But this will last me many, many, many years. I've, I've had it for about five or six years now and I've barely put a dent in it um, in terms of the nose weight. So that's what I use for my nose weight. I just use a pair of uh, clippers to, uh, to, cut it to, uh, to cut it into this kind of stuff here, which I can then, uh, I can then add to uh, any areas that will fit like that. So it's a case of keeping it um, as far forward as you can. So I'm just going to, what I'm going to do is just tack it in place with a little bit of super glue, which I, uh, and then it's just dropping some of this lead in and around like so, and uh, getting plenty of it. Like I said, you, you want it as, uh, as far forward as you can possibly get it. I'm just using a little, a few little dabs of super glue, more or less, to uh, to tack it in place. The, um, <coughs> the other half of the wing which will join on there you can uh, also add some more weight remember we're trying to keep it as far forward as we uh, as we possibly can be careful you don't add um, be careful that adding weight to this half doesn't interfere with the uh, the lower half so just adding a few bits here, okay, adding a drop of super glue, a few drops of super glue. Okay, and then we can uh, got some uh, kicker here, which is uh, which I'm just going to add a drop to each. Uh, Each nacelle we've added the weight to uh, to set the uh, set it, and then we're going to check the fit. And uh, yeah, I've managed to get a, get enough in there without actually having any interfere with um, each other. So let's have another go around here. 
Okay, so uh, as you can see, I've added weight to all four wing halves. Um, <clears throat> hopefully, we're getting close to enough. I might be able to get a bit more into the fuselage, but having checked the fit, um, nothing's interfering with anything. Basically, we're, we're ready to glue the wing halves together now. So, uh, like I say, I've, I've checked that there's no uh, no interference anywhere. So, I'm going to use. Um, Some liquid poly, some normal humbrol liquid poly for the uh, majority of this. So, What I'm doing is I'm applying a good a good lot of liquid poly to each of the joining surfaces and then giving it you know a minute or two to really soften the plastic well before we uh, before we move on to joining these halves together. Makes for a really nice strong bond. Okay, so they've all had um, a little bit of time to uh, soften the parts, so we're just going to bring them together. Squeezing them together. And then we'll just be running around the uh, edges, adding some tape. And the cells themselves are um, actually really nicely uh, together. Just going to uh, I've left my knife in another room, so. Okay, so we're just going around and checking. Do another little drop in there. So the wind glued together. I'm just checking that all that is. Um, all that's together. Now, one of the things that needs to be added to these uh, to the wings, okay, is there's a there's a, a cone that goes onto the uh, onto the rear of the nacelle. This is one of those parts which has got, um, <laughs> frankly, a horrible reputation for fit. However, even having said that, I'm finding no issue whatsoever with it. So. All I'm going to do is liberally apply some glue around there. He says I've promptly lost the actual. Uh, there it is. That has a reputation for being a bad fit. Well, mine has. Um, I trust you can see that. Mine has gone on with uh, no requirement for anything really after it's dried, than a, than a little bit of light sanding. I'm really uh, struggling to 
see what the issues are with this uh, with this model so far. As I said, my, my memory tells me that it's uh, a largely undeserved reputation, and I hope you can see that the actual building that I'm doing here is um, is also providing the lie to it, as it were. So anyway, I can see that you can see that as a dry fit. That is absolutely fine. There's no problem there. I'd even be tempted not to do anything to that join when it's uh, when it's done. But um, we'll see. So there's there's one wing. So I'm just going to go and do exactly the same with the uh, with the matching wing. And I'll see you when we're ready to carry on with some of the other aspects of um, of building this model. Okay, so just a, this is just a few minutes later now, and um, the wings have all been joined, and uh, will now be left to dry thoroughly. Um, I, like I say, there's some nose weight in there. I don't know if it's going to be enough. We'll uh, time will tell on that one. Well, those, um, the tabs here are definitely interfering with the fit of the wings into the fuselage. So they're, they're one of the things that will have to go. Um, they're one of the things that's going to have to be removed prior to uh, actually joining the wings. But it's, it's really no great, uh, it's, not, uh, it's no great challenge, it's not difficult as such. It's just something that you can... Uh, Make allowances for. Okay, so with the wings having been left overnight to <coughs> dry, having assembled them, what I've done is I've, I've just used some uh, pale blue paint, some medium blue paint, and gone over the areas where I can see obvious um, obvious problems. Now the area. On the upper flap here, um, I can see a, a, a definite scar, um, a definite sort of minor issue with the plastic, as it were. So I've given that a coat of blue, and what I'm going to do is just going to sand off, um, sand that blue back now. So hopefully that's going to highlight the actual issue very clearly for us. So hopefully you can see there, um, what we've got is um, the, there's kind of a moulding defect along the, the rear there, <coughs> a, a kind of dip in the plastic, which was there before I glued it, so it's not the glue that's caused that. So what I'm doing is I'm just seeing how much of this I can literally just sand out with sanding sticks, and if any of it's going to need any filling or anything. To be honest, I think... I think a sanding stick is probably going to do the job. Yeah, that looks like it's that looks like it's going to be fine. So I'm just going to switch to um, a well-worn, bigger sanding stick here. A, uh, use a Tamiya scriber just to clear out all those areas where I've sanded just to make sure that uh, the detail as it exists is still uh, is still clearly visible. Which 
which it is with no, uh, with no problems at all. I'm just going to find one of my uh, yeah, sponge sander. Okay, so we're just going to deal with the trailing edge of the uh, the window. So what I'm going to do, having dealt with that, as you can see, that scar is now completely gone. There's no, uh, there's nothing showing up at all there for that scar. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to work around firstly, before I actually deal with the uh, nacelles here, I'm just going to go around the trailing edge of the wings, making sure that they're um, square. When we've, when, once we've checked that they are square and it's all sounded flat and level, like this, then we can go around checking if there's any, uh, you know, if, the, if there's any uh, thinning down of the, the wing trailing edges and stuff that's needed. But our first first job is just to make sure that the wings are uh, the actual joins themselves are sanded back. So <clears throat> what, I, what I'm hoping you can see on these are um, these areas here, I've actually left the moulding tag on, the sprue tag on. It's easier to sand this off I find when it's assembled uh, and you run considerably less risk of um, sort of damaging or leaving scars where you uh, try and cut those away. So. Keep an eye on your uh, joins there, just to see how they've uh, and we switch to the final one again. sponge sander, might as well give the whole, whole surface a bit of a sand while we're at it. The, the kit's got a very fine textured surface. I know these kind of textures drive some modellers insane but um, it never really bothers me. If it looks like it's going to be a problem, sanding sticks can invariably do everything that's needed to sort the problem. So now I'm just going to sand the inboard leading edge here. takes on some of these wing on the wing leading edge. Just take a little bit of care that you don't destroy the shape of those intakes uh, while you're dealing with it. But um, overall, I'm, I'm pretty pretty happy with what we've done with the wings so far.
Okay, so we've, we've dealt with the actual wing leading and trailing edges. Uh, we're going to use a bit of primer later on just to check for any um, seams. But what I'm going to do now is actually deal with the nacelles. So the first thing I'm going to deal with is um, uh, the first thing I want to deal with is these seams down the sides here. Uh, I'm going to get in there with a little skinny sander. Use the rough edge first just to see. How it goes. And I've got to say again, it's sort of this this is consistent with my experiences of this model in that sort of fairly bad reputation that it has, <clears throat> that tiny little bit of sanding you've just seen me do. has entirely dealt with that seam. That seam is now completely invisible and um, as you can see that's taken me you know about a minute. Let's have a look on the other side now just to uh, see how we go. So again I'm going to use the rough rough side. Okay, this side is very slightly different in that I've got a little actual gap. Um, I've got a small gap actually towards the uh, leading edge of the wing here. Um, but that is really going to be probably just nothing more than a little bit of Mr. Surfacer. So we've got we've got a tiny little gap just down here. That'll need a little bit of Mr. Surfacer. Um, got a panel line here that's going to need carrying across. Uh, but essentially, this is it for the uh, <clears throat> for these wings that have this terrible, terrible reputation. So I've got to deal with the uh, the trailing edge here now, the um, the the rear of the nacelle fairing. Um, the fit here isn't tremendous, but it certainly isn't awful. So I'm just going to use a skinny sander, sand all these joints, see how they blend in. Using a coarse side of the skinny sander, it's um, something I've always said when sanding. Just when you need to remove material, get in there with the, the roughest thing you've got that will do the job, and get rid of all the initial material as soon as you can. You can switch to uh, finer grips later on, with absolutely no problem whatsoever to. Uh, finish off this kind of blending operation. So
Okay, so we've done that now. We've identified a couple of uh, minor areas. Um, <coughs> the rear here, where the actual um, uh, the the tip, the rear tip to the nacelle has gone on. There's a little bit of filling needed there, and as I mentioned before, there's um, a little bit uh, that's, that's needed along here. I'll just check the other one. <coughs> the other one, the, the other wing, I've just checked it, and uh, the gaps are in exactly the same places on the other wing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill those all in one go. Um, Using uh, my normal CA and talcum powder mix. Uh, if I can find, oh, there we go. There's my talc. So, as ever, out of CA onto some tape there. dabs of my uh, talc mixed with pigment so that it's visible. And then we're looking at uh, this stuff sands very easily so uh, you need not worry about being too liberal with it. It's not like normal super glue, which uh, dries rock hard and can be the very devil to sand. Uh, this stuff will dry in a couple of minutes, and it will dry uh, so it's easily sandable. So I'm just going to fill in both of those little areas there and there. So as you can see. Couple of little areas that have needed filling, but um, hardly the end of days, is it? So the other one I know, having done this, checked this last night, is pretty much the same. So There we go, so I want to make sure you get rid of the uh, excess super glue. So you can use accelerator on these if you want, so I'll just show you. Uh, Accelerator. Like so. some accelerator added so they are now dry and ready to sand. So
So you can see how easy and quick this is to uh, correct. These are really tiny little uh, filling jobs. In fact, I'm even using the um, the finer side of the uh, skinny sander for this job. There we go, that's that. So that's the um, the rear fairing of that done. I'm just going to get one of my slightly rougher, the uh, purple sanding stick. I've done quite a bit of sanding on this area, so... concerned that wing more or less dealt with. I'm just looking for some of my uh, well worn or a piece of uh, piece of Scotch Bright so I've got a piece of fine Scotch Bright I'm just going to cut a chunk off here and uh, then I'm just going to give the uh, areas I've dealt with a bit of a polish So that's one wing done. Now the only area I can really find where there's any detail that needs restoring is uh, there's a panel line down here. Now, remark, funnily enough, it, it, it didn't even carry across um, on the, on the moulding anyway. It was never there, so uh, we, we'd have to add it whether we needed to fill this area or not. So uh, it really has made no difference to filling and sanding. I would have had to have done a little bit of work there anyway. So all we're doing is that 
I'm using my uh, and that's it. I'm going to try and use the same piece on the other side here. It really is a it's a couple of millimetres and that's it. So So that's these. Uh, that's the wings, or wing, I should say, dealt with. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and cover exactly the same areas on the other wing that you just see me do with that wing, and uh, then I'll see you back when we're ready to uh, carry on with the construction of the model. Uh, I'll see you then.